Hi guys, and welcome back to the dollhouse. I'm Maeve here, Wednesday Doll, and this week we are coming back from our winter break. I'm sorry that it took so long for us to come back, and I'm sorry that it's been kind of messy, but, you know, lives and things get in the way. I hope you guys had a good holiday season with your family and friends. Um, I and the other dollhouse girls did, and we're glad to be back. Before I get started with our topic this week, I just wanted to quickly say the reason why I'm wearing glasses in this video is because I did get in a fight this past weekend. It's not something I really want to get into. It's nowhere near as important as what I have to talk about this week. Um, I just wanted to make sure I made that quick disclaimer because I didn't want you guys to think I was being a bitch or being insincere. I just didn't think that... I thought it was kind of distracting, so I wanted this to be about the topic and not about my face. So, that's that. Now this week we are talking about... Leela Alcorn, who is a trans teen who committed suicide um, because her family did not accept her and her friends didn't either and she had basically no support system. Now, one of the reasons why this story bothers me so much is because Leela wrote a suicide note. And oftentimes when you read a suicide note, it is something that's comprised of less than the most logical thought. A lot of times people are very depressed. Um, they don't speak clearly or write clearly in the letters. A lot of it doesn't make sense all the time to the people who read it after. Um, but this specific letter was so detailed, so thought out. So it was just very powerful because of the fact that she basically said this was completely avoidable. The only reason why she killed herself is because she felt like there was no other option. She was in a situation where pretty much everything had been taken away from her and she was completely isolated from the world with her thoughts, with her depression. And as a 26 year old trans woman, I honestly have bad days myself. And I have the luxury of talking to my friends or my family if it's hard for me. But I can't imagine what it's like for a teenager who is trans in this situation and is cut off from the world and is not allowed to be who they are. She speaks in the letter about how she wanted to wait it out. And a lot of times this is our, you know, first thought when it comes to being trapped in situations that we can't handle. This is not the first time I've heard this. A lot of girls want to wait until they get out of their parents' house, especially if they're not supportive, um, and move out or go to college or do whatever they need to do to make distance so that they can start their life. Um, as trans people, we spend so much time waiting to start our lives. So much time. And you have no idea how hard it is how much it sucks to feel trapped and like you can't do anything you can't move you can't breathe you are practically not living that's that's, that's what it feels like to me um and every day that you're not moving is a reminder to how behind you are or how much you don't feel like yourself or any number of things that makes you feel terrible and because of the fact that Leela felt this way every day, probably, while she had these things taken away from her, um, while she was isolated. Um, she felt the need to take her own life. And uh, it's, it's really, really sad. Um, you know, and Edie touched on this a little bit, but we get messages from girls um, all the time, you know, younger girls who want advice and uh leela followed edie um she's not somebody i ever had contact with but she followed her and you know sometimes i don't always sometimes i don't always respond to messages when girls write me and this really worries me because it's like how many leelas are there out in the world who just need somebody to talk to, you know, who just need, um, you know, something to hold on to, some bit of help or advice or strength from another person, and you don't even know. It made me feel guilty. Even though I wasn't a part of that situation, even though I couldn't have directly helped or intercepted this kind of situation, 
it makes you wonder how um how there are other girls that might be having the same problem and i know there are it's obvious that there are there are trans kids all over the united states all over the world who are having these same exact issues um and uh it's just really unfortunate that there isn't more support set up for them and that some of them don't even have access to it you know it's great that we have the internet and um, we're able to log in and talk to each other and uh, support each other and um, that we're there for each other but at the same time in her situation she didn't have that you know she um, she was cut off from everything and it's just it's really unfortunate I really don't know what else to say I'm angry because what happened to her I consider it to be child abuse I consider it to be neglect these people should be arrested they should be put in jail for what they did to their child all she wanted to be was herself and they were more concerned with their beliefs and their ideals than their child's happiness when in reality if you're a parent the first concern that you should have is your child's well-being and in this case that was not that was not the issue it was their pride it was their beliefs that got in the way and because of them their child is dead it is absolutely on their heads and i hope karma gets them i really do and i know that's terrible to say and i'm not saying i wish bad on them but i hope that they get what they deserve and that's my honest truth um all I'm going to say, I guess, and I know this has been a very scattered video and I know it's long, I'm sorry, and I'm, I'm emotional, but all I'm going to say is if you know somebody that is in one of these situations, if somebody is close to you and you feel like they're depressed or that they're in a situation where um, they don't have that much support, even if you don't know them that well, even if you just see them, um, it's important that you reach out. It really is. Because even the smallest bit of um, support, of help, of um, talking to them can make a huge difference. You know, if Leela had somebody, because she mentioned she didn't have very many friends, um, and the ones that she did have, she didn't feel like cared about her. If she had had somebody, maybe it would be different. If you could be that somebody for somebody else who is in so much pain, I would hope that you can do that. Like I said, I feel guilty because I get messages from girls all the time and I wonder to myself, um, did one girl that I ignored, is, is, is she headed down that path? It's just, it's a really fucked up situation. Um, and I want you all to know that we love you guys. We love you so much. And that whether it feels like it or not, it will get better. It will be hard. Um, my pain isn't gone. My struggle isn't over. Um, I'm not perfect and my life is not perfect and I don't feel good every day. But it will get better than it is for you right now if you're in a situation like Leela. It will get better than that. It will become more tolerable. And eventually you will get to a place where you can be happy. But you have to live to get there. So... That's my little message to you guys. I'm sorry that this video was so long. I'm sorry that I'm a mess. I'm sorry that my makeup is running and that I'm getting... It's smeared all over my face or whatever. Um, it was really important for me to make this video. I had to say something about the topic. I know that. And I'm not the best when it comes to things that are emotional, but... This really touched me just because... It has to stop happening. It has to stop. Thank you guys for watching The Dollhouse. Um, we will be back next week with a, hopefully a happier topic. Um, I love you guys, and I hope everything is well. And we will see you guys next week. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.